Fiudia absolutely handles Leviathan on ascent as they pick up the win 13 to 5. We now move on to what Pearl next Pearl. up, yeah. which hey, anything can happen. Of course, some Golden Boy alongside with Mimi and Ballas. We look to break everything down here. Fiudia Leviathan. And I think right out of the gate, one of the things that we could pick up, uh, you know, was just the high impact players that we needed to see from Leviathan simply were not there. But for Furia, they were having a whale of a time. They were doing fantastic individually. Digizin in particular was feasting. And I think so much of that was on their attacking side. They did an excellent job of finding these gaps. One that other teams have found before. And that tree hold is pretty weak for Leviathan. And they're quite vulnerable to those A splits. And the second was just these B executes that Leviathan was consistently failing to shut down. Yeah, and I feel like Leviathan was just playing so passive on that defensive side. Like he said it, it really felt like the same game that we watched last week against loud mm -hmm. where they just got rolled against the i mean good attack here from fury don't get me wrong but you already seen like multiple spots here where leviathan has spotted and fell back both players instantly in backside and they just have so much time here fury to work with whatever leviathan gives them here it's way too easy to find the mistakes yeah it does seem like it's always we get that contact we fall back group on a site and try an anchor and the anchors were getting ran over yeah leviathan. this is another one <laughs> Rounds, and it was just so sloppy. The drone doesn't come yeah. close off of that ult that you can expect that the idea is to get someone up to claim that space. And Digizin takes advantage. There were so many of those yeah. little gaps and also, that like, kind they of started a snowball. Hunter's Fury and they yes. canceled it. You yeah. know what I mean? So that should also tell you like that they're there. It was really weird to see Levi at Donbala be in, in a position where it felt like they weren't sure what they wanted to do. There was one round I remember where they were just kind of meandering about. It looked like they were going to fake B and then they didn't. They yeah. did no intel. So attacking side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, what's going on here? Yeah, they're playing really scared, like constantly. I think Taco is somebody that we saw multiple times actually just go like for a smoke so he could mm -hmm. peek into the smoke and then he just wouldn't go past like a certain point. And he just got rolled so often because of that. You could see multiple times. I even remember one of the, the rounds where there were the kills were locked down where the guy was known where he was and also yeah. didn't follow yeah. up on it because I don't know I don't I don't know what's gotten into them but it's definitely not it's not the Leviathan that started the season the confidence looks shot in particular for Taco he was only involved in three opening kills <laughs> across that series as, as Jet he was just playing so passive and this is what we were talking defense. about in the show. yeah, yeah like, you're expecting me taking peeks in mid to be aggressive on the extremities at times but none of that was happening and this is kind of what I feared for Leviathan yeah. yep. them playing back trying to make the smart play play the numbers be more passive and in having no confidence to take those risks, they just get bowled over by the teams who are willing to. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, one guy who was having a great time, though, is actually Digis in. And before we head into map two, we'll go ahead and take a quick stop. You know where we're going with the Aim Lab shoot around. And this time, we are hanging out with Digis in, the coolest guy in the room. And, uh, and, and yeah, to kind of like really show the contrast here, Digis in on the other side of that, highly impactful constantly involved in those first goals. Sometimes Bala even throwing himself into the fight when he probably didn't even need to and could have conserved his life, but he was still just trying to create those openings for his teammates. Yeah, and honestly, those those openings are what got them some of those crucial rounds. That, that attack side is not easy to put together. And I think Digizin being the guy who was, I mean, constantly doing what he needs to do on that side is really nice. The one difference here that I'm seeing out of Fury is they don't really need to be fired up, which is crazy. Every other single match where they're actually pressured, where they're actually challenged, they need to be fierce. You know, Digizin needs to be yeah. yelling across the stage yeah. or he's not active. And in this case, they're just smiling. They're just laughing. I've never seen this from Fury, and that speaks to maybe how easy that was. And their past few games, even when they have lost in those very close series, I think, versus NRG, it was because of, like, absurd individual moments. Like, yeah. someone like MW Sarah or Khalil stepping yeah. up and having huge individual plays to save the, the rounds. It wasn't the case on Ascent. It was very much Fury just having a good idea. Their side yeah. executes consistently working, and their retakes being good. And now, as we head towards Pearl, that worries me. Because Fury starts yeah. on this attacking side and I almost see this pace just continuing. I, I would say that, but I also think that if there's any any map that I want to see that discipline from players, it's going to be on Pearl. Sure. The discipline in the sense of actually playing scared, not making like making sure you're not giving up your life, and yeah. that's important even for Taco on this map because he's going to be playing that defensive side with the op. I believe Fury, this isn't their map pick, so I believe they're going to start on that attack side. And, and I, I do think Leviathan here, with the structure, with the discipline, with the fact that they're undefeated on this map, they should be a little bit more comfortable playing uh, on a map 
like a set where they were getting yeah. completely exposed by multiple teams. It's a big difference. Yeah, they're seven and zero in this map, and one of the wins was over Furia during the regular season back in week two. But a lot has changed since then. It was this kind of troll neon comp that wasn't working out for Furia. A lot back of experimentation. Then. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. they were maybe cooking a little bit too much. But now they've switched to the default comp that everyone plays: Barber, <laughs> Viper, Sky Jet. It's the meta, and I think they've actually looked really good at it compared to that history I was just talking about. Yeah, I, I think it's been obviously much much better, but it hasn't been like flawless, right? Sure. I think honestly, I, I kind of feel like they struggle a little bit to put 100 Thieves down on this map, where mm -hmm. 100 Thieves was not prepared on it. But it is better than that Neon Comp because you actually have something to play for on defense. Although I really did like it at its onset when they were playing that attack side. They came out to such a big lead against the Viet Nhan. So uh, I'm looking forward to see how that difference and that change for Fury actually adapts now against this team of the Viet Nhan. Yeah, I, I really think that my, what I want, that Fury that we got on Ascent, that's the Fury that I want every day. That's the Fury that I want all the time. And I know the teams can dismantle that, and I know it's a lot easier said than done, but I mean, guys, like, that discipline that Fury has showed, the way that they played, that looked like the team that I was hyped up about coming out of lock-in who nearly took a game off, nearly took Fnatic to their limit, you know? Yeah, that's a balance we were talking about where they have good preparation and good preset ideas, but are also willing to take risks and get aggressive in the mid-rounds when they need to. Yeah, and looking at the comps, I mean, it's exactly the same as we always expect here. Uh, just the bog standard Harper Viper. This is America's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is America's. Yeah, ain't that the truth. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us here. You see what the picks are. We're going to Pearl. Let's find out, though, if we can get ourselves a map number three. Leviathan are going to have to dig deep, but Furia could end it here and now. Let's send it over to your casters to take us through it. It's, of course, Brennan Sideshow. Take it away. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, let's get to it, map number two. And listen, we set up the stakes, we set up the storylines and talked about how these teams, both of them, Furia, Leviathan, they need to step up now in playoffs when it really matters most. We've just seen that from Furia, bringing it over the line in a very dominant fashion. But now maybe, listen, a bit more of an even staging ground as we jump and head into Pearl. Yeah, the Golden Boy just asked us, do we think it's going to be able to get to a map three? I think Leviathan are favored here. Uh, Bala was talking about it. They are undefeated on this map so far. Uh, the question really is, how good does it look now? Because they haven't played it in a month. And this pistol round clash over by B right looks there. like it is going to be seismic. Oh, they are not messing around. Look at this grouped up, ready to clash. Wow, everybody hiding from Leviathan. Patient. This is common. They'd like to do this. Snake by around the back. That's going to set them up with the flash. Everybody getting brutalized. But the damage of the bullets, it's exchanged. It's even to a degree. But still, it's Furia with the two player advantage. Shy on the close corner. The spike planted. But watch for damage done, Khalil. He lands it. That's a pistol round win in the blink of an eye for Furia. There was one player alive for Leviathan in the first 18 seconds. <laughs> and then the round was done in the first 30. Yeah. That's an extremely pivotal clash that happens Spike over there. Down, B. And really, the, the thing that snarls them up is that Furia didn't use too much utility, and they contacted in there with all five players. Perhaps if that's only three, if they're playing a bit more of a 3-1-1, I think that pistol round might work really well for Lev. Yeah, it goes a bit differently. Here's another clash. Chops and changes. Lev stacked up. High tide cuts across. Contacted through. Furia make no noise at all. No notice that they are taking it. Anti-flash played around the back. And they're all collected up. I got the MW. One away, by the way, to result. He's going to plan. He's going to get it. Just in time for the bonus round. That could be really pivotal. We saw a bonus round ultimate, I believe it was the null command on Ascent, make a huge difference. And, and of course, this is just the second round after the pistol. You're expecting Fury to win this because they have massively better weaponry. But I do think it showcases that Fury are ready for this level of aggression from Leviathan on both of the sides of the map. When we saw Lev play this, and remember, it's been almost a month since we've seen Lev play Pearl. People just tend to ban it against them. Mm -hmm. So it's been almost a month. When Lev did play it, they had a lot of mid-aggression with Taco, with Noswa, with Mazino. And then they would also play aggressive in A main and B main with that same trio. As Taco who's taking point in most of that. Yes. Counterpoint to how he was really 
performing and playing in that previous map. He was taking, what was it, three fights? Three first duels compared to ten from Dejusine. Right. I mean, Taco has already taken up, I mean, maybe not technically taken, but has been involved in those first skirmishes in both of these first rounds. His first death there. But you will see Taco get a lot more involved on Pearl. The question to me is, does he deliver? Kind this time, up to it. This time he's just alone towards the B site, so not the focus of his team strategy this time. I would love to shut this one down. A bit of a team flash there. So this cascade and flash setup is what Leviathan usually do when they're fighting heavy towards mid. And you can see that they bait that at the beginning of the round, and it's only Taco over here. Oh. Not confident to take the fight against QCK with a Guardian. Just backs away. Slight jiggle peek, hunting for it. Snake bite. That is a little bit too short of the no, mark. No, no. That's trying no? to break the alarm bot. That's, ah, okay. that's trying to take setup. out some of the... In case the Killjoy setup. Yeah, some of the KJ line. setups. Yeah. He didn't just miss the one on Taco. Yeah, no, I was... Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I was like, that's a bit... Okay, maybe the playoff pressure getting a bit, you know, too much to him, but no. <laughs> Still, Taco is going to have to be up. huge to shut this down as the Viper Walls brought up in his trying. face. Second snake bite, much more intentional towards the back of Paul's. High tide, rips its way through. There's the Seekers playing a decent part as well. Clearing a decent amount of space. So left force to play back here into the retake. Still, force to be confident. Maybe a cause for concern as well. This is very far up onto the back of the side. Back of Hawes doubled up. It's being played. Dog needs to be broken. It is at that. So they don't clear properly into the back of Hawes. And this fight does take it. It's held. The crossfire is there. Salvage saved. QCK is putting in so much work. Towards the back with the Guardian. Flash in his face. Can't see a thing. Let's lose the clip. But three in a round. King's there. And there's so much patience and so much confidence there. It's Furia converting this bonus round, Josh. It's hard not to play Again. The Furia bonus are the best in the playoffs, and they show no signs of slowing down. It's a timeout already. Where's Norswa's utility for this peak? The Trailblazer, of course, already used, but he used it from the high ground so that they had chances to be able to break the dog before it ever pressured back holes. Yeah. And then he never flashed. They just tried to dry swing in there, pinching back holes from two ang uh, two sides. And Fury are able to hold on. Like you said, excellent performance, of course, from QCK. Give him his flowers in that spot. No issues with that. But Leviathan are going to have to be able to get value from those retakes. And Ona, I'm sure, oh, popping off. is going to be spitting in moments like this. Fury, when they win those pistol rounds, best bonus team in terms of converting that third round 50% of the time, Josh, which is absurd when you think about it. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about other stats that are ridiculous from Furia. In that previous map, they were winning 55% of their 4v5s. <laughs> when they lose a player early, they were still winning uh, more than they were losing yeah, by a significant margin. Advantaged. That's... Uh... <laughs> it's just insane. Yeah. So, Fury have been great at those all season long, but not slowing down in any regard on map one here. Lev have got a cheeky eco idea of trying to push towards mid. Bit of a gambit, isn't it? But seeing if they can collect anyone. And usually it's, usually it's going to be Khalil or QCK that are pressured in these situations. They're the ones that whose their job is to kind of hold on to space for Fury. And Khalil rinsed them last time. When they clashed in the regular season, that was where Khalil was hitting the jump shots onto Shy, hitting otherworldly stuff. It doesn't even look like he needs to hit that form today. No, the team play prior preparation is there currently. Furia. Fucking surgical in some of these moments. They slowed this one all the way down. There was a chance. King was there with the ADS. Orb immediately goes up. Nana Swarm dropped down behind him. Dodges it. They can't sort of call to use any more util towards A. Now cutting noise and starting to work their way over towards B. QCK. Careful. Slowly working his way towards that. Just gaining a bit of that map control for his team. I mean, Shy is doing the same jump peak stuff that we were just talking about. Oh, B split. Yeah, flash through, dash as well. It's going to cut that one up. No one holding close to that corner, but at the back of Hall's guy. It's going to be feeling the heat. 
Saw one there. Flash connects. So now they know that there is a player sitting in there. How do you approach it? How do you clear it? Shorty jumping round. That is a very wide peak, but it is traded still. One for one. Plan gonna go down. Miles, heal up, squad. You're still alive in a fight. Now, Trailblazer into the back. No stun connection. It's there. Reckoning online. This is really gonna be putting a dampener onto any sort of attempt to try and get anything going for Lev. They wade right into it. Choked up. Noswa. Last one left with just the stinger. Ideally, looking to go down to the spike. Somewhat expensive. Utilizing the Reckoning there in the post plant when Leviathan haven't invested in weaponry in this round. I think that's about the only silver lining yeah, that mean, we've seen, though, this whole map. But even then, I don't hate it from a zine. No? Yeah, I mean, you use it in that scenario, you know that your back horse player is being pressured. Here's the, here's the only compounding effect of that, though, Bren, I think, is that QCK would love to get his Vikers pit down in the next round in a big eco swing round, where you can set back Leviathan and keep your momentum rolling. But you don't really have an extra tool to push Lev away. The Seekers, the Reckoning, those ults, the Lockdown, those are fantastic for actually gaining space for the pit to go down. If they just try and be hit with a pit, there's a fair old chance that Leviathan spam them to death. That's the only rough consequence of what they've done. Okay, here's Taco peeking into mid with his operator. Up online, round five, very early on, but it looks like Fury want none of it. Yeah, again, all the eyes placed towards mid. Cascade as well, but this is barreling down B. Too long, there's got, of course, the Nana Swarm set up here. Harbour cutting it away. Flash over it, right around the corner, Mazzino. I mean, he's granted a chance and an opportunity. Of course, he's going to grasp it. Weird pathing from the Dazine. Hoping he can get himself up onto, uh, onto heaven there, but brought down in the blink of an eye. They find themselves again in that 4v5. We brought up the stats. Even when Furia are in a disadvantaged position like this, they still are favored to win it so far. Which absolutely should not be the case, obviously. You look at what King where, rather, King is. There's a ping there from Furia over on the A side. King is way in front of that, getting really good information for his team. The, the player at risk, to be honest, is Taco. He's on such a close angle with this op. My Off angle, though, on top of the box. Don't really hard clear that one. So, opens it up, but no time wasted. Running all the way through. Taco with a reposition, missed the shot. But King's got a fantastic spot here. Yeah, smoke at his feet. They are cut on. They have to make the call here. The A main could be compromised. Look at them. They're jiggling it, baiting it. They know it's there. Cove gets them onto the site. Plant going to be stuck. Pushing forwards, QCK. It's spam down, and the fights are being won out just like that. Not enough time to spare now. Ten seconds. Down to nothing. Khalil with plenty of money. Would love to do some more economical damage, but... Chooses not to take the fight to them. Finally, Leviathan get a round on the board. And it's clean, absolutely flawless. Taking Dijazin out early and then using all of that information that Furia had hard committed over to B to take good spots around the map. And Taco has to hit a somewhat difficult shot there. But the rest of his players were all in fantastic positions. Really low risk, high reward spots. Yeah. In that moment, call has to be made. Fighting yeah. for one air or the other, but Lev just chose to... Well, at least Furia chose to stick towards the plant there. King being the difference maker. Taco is alone once again with Op in hand. Flash. Connects Cascade. Push forward. He hears them. Running him down. With the dash active updraft, the movement is clean. Great Gets out work. of his life. Massive play. Khalil now tries to answer it back once more. He's moving forward. He's got a teammate at his back. Trailblazer. No one to break this one. Taco has to commit. The shot's there. Mazine also. He's getting a little bit cheeky with it, isn't he? He's worked his way up with the Cascade. Obfuscating it. It's a split up into it. And all the way at the back of the horse. It's anyone's game. With this many walls in their face. The smoke's there. On top of it. Trailblazer broken. Round to the side. Taco. He wants to get a fight. A clean one. But he's not going to be handed it. It's never easy. Still controlled towards the back of the horse here. Shy was handed again another opportunity. Could not find it, could not get the kill. And with the Vipers pit down now, it gets that much more difficult. Off angle. MW. High tide. Reactions there. Retreats back to the pit. Defensive position flashed up. Aims for the reaction. Snakebite clears him. This is good utility from Lev. 
But you still have to wade through all of this. The murky unknowns, the green on your screen. What a throw, jumping with the shorty. Mazzini to do the most. What can I say? I a Red Bull clutch, and that's the fifth one on the board. Heartbreak for Leviathan. It felt like their most difficult task in that round was going to be to take QCK out and drop the pit. And yet, even as King dove forwards, Shorty Pellets finding the cranium of his Viper opposition. Mazin just cleans up. Yeah. Heartbreak, but also fantastic solidity from this Furious squad. Things got. Again, very chaotic for Leviathan, and we're getting back into this oh, round we go. as the op is still getting pressured on the opposite side of the map now. Met. MW, wide swing, no util to clear him off that angle, so Taco is granted. A reminder, Taco had three first duels on the opening map of Ascent. It feels like he's taking that many duels per round now, <laughs> including all of the first ones. It's that centerpiece of how they want to be playing this one. Dash into the side of the Zines there, Cove now up, Mazine. Will he get the plan off for free? Cove's broken Spike into the corner. The damage connecting. Now the reckoning. That reckoning's so good. It pushes Leviathan back and stops them from going for their lockdown retake. Taking back the side. Taco. There's a stun on his feet, dodging side by side. Mazine already pushing Ready. back into it, but he don't expect the second play yet. There, Mazine still. He holds it. The line towards the back of the side, the lockdown knows he has to push this one. Turret in his face, 5 HP, kills the Lance. Taco, the return of the fire. Lockdown, it's going to be paving the way, but the players are out of it. They're not going to be detained, and time is running so low. Nana swarms at his feet, he hears it plays. He knows he can't win it. He has to back away. He has to save. And the fury of dominance simply continues. There's not enough interplay between Taco and the rest of the team here. Uh, Taco grabs the first kill, and yet Leviathan still give up all the space. And Furia are so happy to play 4v5s when they have sight control. They do not care about that kind of stuff. They've been practicing it all, all year, yeah. all season. And Their 4v5, 4v5 game 5. is just honed. It's insane. It's just insane. They're looking like they came to playoffs to play. That was the question to set up both of these teams. Would we see an uptick in that form? Fury. Similar beginning, high tide now. Cuts up into half of it, playing inside the smoke. Taco, good movement. Not enough to adjust though, it's the Jazine. And look at that, pushing all the way through. Tried to time it up with the dog. It is returned and traded. Seekers now, getting a bit scrappy. It's anarchy. But already, QCK and Khalil have taken their timings through B-Link. They recognize that Leviathan are getting the better end of it, and they've already given Mazin more options as the IGL. Destroyed. Yeah, Tara broken now, Shy. Moves forwards anyway. Wants to take the fight to them, but... Still alive. Towards the back, he knows he's being pressured. Regain control bot. of falls. Now there is an opportunity, a chance to slow this down. 50 seconds into the round. All falling. Oh, that B-Link flash yeah. gives them bad information. They think Khalil's disappeared. And that gives the right timing now for Fury. Moving forward to the high tide. And the swarm's not broken, though. Already onto the side. Shai has to push up inside of his own. Got his teammates to back him, though. Cove's there. Kills found. Before it can materialize, before it could bloom. And okay, left. Better fight back in. In that second round, so maybe they can just make it a bit much doable. 6 2, though. It's not been a great start on either of these maps. Levitan's mentality has got to be suffering just a little bit in games like this. Great shot from Nozla through the code there. Denies Mazin as he was going for the plant. Fist bumps there as Shai tries to solidify himself, this time over on the A side. Always playing opposite to Taco. Furia are taking a main, come hell or high water. Yeah, taking control, farming up the orb, reckoning is Poison online. Is have to imagine that's going to be utilized now. King spotted. Free aim now, reckoning as well, into the site. Obviously, setup has been moved. Shine out playing here with the Nana Swarms. 
Activating both of them, just trying to buy a bit of time for the rest of his team to get into it, but it's pushed back. Did you see now? High ground angle has to clear out through into the back of Secret. Now, to see the spike. Time to get planted. Cove is broken. Reposition from Mazine, and this is a good a flood attempt. Little be a time. Gotta play together, though. Spike dropped down. Should be advantaged. And they should have a chance. Footsteps. Both teams waiting the right time here. Possibly util to come back on with the flash is there. Snake bite into the corner, clearing the corners. They want to take the fight straight up! Just to get a one after the other, but the crossfire is dead! Shy looked like sleeping a wheel for fun. A moment! Khalil still alive! 3-4 it! What a strange round! Just coming down straight up to the fights to be taken towards the back of the site. Very patient from both teams. They knew it was a war to get the plant down. And Furia muscled their way forwards, Dijazine finding a couple. And yet Leviathan were holding backside perfectly up until Khalil came through with another 1v3 like Mazine in a previous round too. Khalil's clutching in weeks one and two, including their game against Leviathan was phenomenal. Since then we just haven't seen it, but maybe he's back. Oh, is this the Same pistol look. set up again? Same look, the pistol set up. But it's noted, surely, there's a flash around the corner, they know they're there, trying to play anti flash round the side. Will they get anything else, any more value? It looks so unlikely. Damage is certainly being done here, Nozwa had to take away two of the guns, but... Lasted about as long as the pistol. Coming back. Seeing evidence there as well. Something that Lev, they have done in the past, they do that when they're on the weaker buy as well, so that prior preparation may be showcasing once more to Furia. They knew what to expect. I want to point out as well that, you know, Khalil just won that 1v3 to steal away round 10. He's at the bottom of the scoreboard and he's 8 and 2. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure, he's not as active as the rest of his team because he's all about controlling space, but he just, he's never been pushed or punished and always delivered. It's an equal spread in terms of those numbers. Taco with the operator. Uh. Needs to be their savior. Oh. Bullets rattled side to side, smoke in his face. He doesn't know where to look. Has to drop both of them down. Dog sailing past him. Spray through into the smoke. Mazzino falls early. No one can play up to this one. Not with a lockdown cleaving them all the way back. And the space is gained deep here. MW close onto the corner. But, okay, Taco aware of it. Now a lockdown can be used in kind. That's going to clear through into the back of Halls. This flank attempt by QCK. Might be pivotal, we'll keep an eye on it. Round stand of aggress. Backing out. Any sort of detainment? Not quite. Straight up playing the retake. But there's no high time, there's no harbor utility. Yeah, not gonna have that extra wall to push them away. You have to take the fights to them. Shot misses, Taco's low, smoke to cover his teammates back. GCK, he's gonna be the difference maker. He's with every shot, and Shine's just stuck in the way. Take it out, destroy, have on it. Shots this way, that way, not for sticking that up time, yes. Barely done. Squeezing through the third round gain for Lev. Last round before the switch. Don't say anything. That's how difficult it is for Levy Dunn to put a round on the board. Yeah, if that's what it takes, players missing their shots, whiffing off to the side. That's what they need in order to even start mounting these rounds up against Furia. Out. There's no easy rounds coming their way. Nothing given for free. And I think they need this. They need four. Breathe deep. Final round of the first half. Last chance. Viatana. Desperate hope to get our fourth round. Again, the similar, cautious beginning. Using the util to take that A main control. King. He's done a lot. Ooh, okay. Instantaneous QCK! He's always there. Ready for the swing, ready for the trade. Not lacking the confidence. And King was trying to pop his Vipers all based off pressure from Furia. He was playing a really aggressive spot. But now they're in a 3v4. And he's used his pit on the opposite side of the map. He's just going to be anchored to that position, tethered there, miles away from the action. Of course, being made though, he's already leaving it, already abandoning it. They can hear it barreling their way down, B long. Roblaze are clearing the closed corners, a bit of spam on top of it, but they still have to get through this Nana Swarm setup. This is shy. Pop this off now. Larmot taking 
That contact, still the Jazine all the way into the back of Horse, the Reckoning clearing through. No time wasted, no as well, look at this from him. Wants to take the battle to them, two kills, traded out though. Still, need to get the spike down, Mazine is dead, not enough bullets left. Shy, massive stead up. Switching Steps it up now to get that fourth one, so... Is the potential there? Can I run it all the way back? Have they done enough work? That's the real big question. Nosworth does such a great job in this round. He's so aggressive and confident. That, to me, has been what's been missing. They need players swinging like that. They need to believe that they can still win. That's what it's going to have to take, isn't it? We'll send this down now to the desk to break down the half so far. Thank you so much, fellas. 8-4, and with a win right at the tail end of that half, could potentially give Leviathan just a bit of a boost. Hopefully, you would hope that would be the case, but man, it has been all furious so far. Leviathan's attack side is great. This is a very winnable half, but it could have been so much better yeah. because Furia was stealing away some ridiculous rounds that just were booming, honestly. <laughs> it was these late round situations where Lev was trying to play into that structure again, retreating, trying to play retail, takes in man-up situations where Fury would just find a gap and abuse it. Yeah, there was two 4v5s and then two massive clutches as well. This round is one of them. And you, you think Leviathan has the chance when they get this pit down, but then Masin just goes crazy. Khalil had one of these rounds on B. We had a, a round here as well where they're just like, you, it, this is a 4v5 again. You think Leviathan had this. You think they're set up to play the retake. They get the position for the lockdown by uh, getting the first kill on the MW0 who's peeking in secret. And then they just allow everybody else to be so far back that Furia has still all the room to work with in that round. It also seemed like Leviathan continued to be predictable. They did that same kind of eco strat that they love like fighting three Pimon. times. Like three times didn't work yeah. a single time. Furia always was fighting ahead instead of going back onto that little box to be able to punish it. And now going into this half, it's less about is this enough rounds for me for Leviathan to come back? Because it is. It's more about like what is the confidence like right now for these guys? Because we saw a little, little burst of it in that last round. But throughout this series, they've just been so slow so passive yeah. even when they have these advantage situations it, it, it feels so strange to me to say this but Leviathan right now I mean in some of those rounds they felt like they were moving away from the protocols and I think leaning into that chaos uh, and that's why some of those 4v5 slipped away from them yeah we'll see if that sort of thing continues on this attack side I think the attack side is a little bit more structured for Leviathan on this one so I don't know if this is enough I'm wondering how they can shut down Taco. He's so sacrificial in a he's lot of well. these executes, but he's been doing, yeah, way better in this map thus far. All right, well, you heard from the analysts. Let's now go ahead and hear from the casters. Send it back over to Brandon Sideshow. And yeah, that jet head-to-head -head really playing great importance. And now we look towards that attack side of Leviathan. Do they have something else up their sleeves? Because, I mean, Bala was making note of it as well, and, and Mimi on top of it, you know, the, the eco strategy by Furia holding deep towards B, it feels like the playbook was getting exhausted at various points. Yeah, Here. I think Lev's playbook has been deeper over the course of this season on Pearl compared to their other maps. Part of that with the strats that they pull out on their attack side. Here you see to start Mazine throwing the high tide at the beginning of this, and it's going to force out a piece of utility early on. Trailblazer taken out. And look at where the Killjoy has their utility set up. Look at Khalil's alarm bot in particular. What? They have not got any intention of seriously fighting for mid. They want to fake like there's people in mid and then actually stack heavy towards the sites. Hard anchoring. Cascade gets used. The turret takes that contract. Did they break the turret? Break it? They, did they think they broke the turret? I'm not too sure. I mean, that is very odd. I mean, that is way, way too much value that Khalil is getting out of that. It's going to allow four people to stay over towards B. As soon right as the there. turret takes a bit of damage but doesn't get broken, they know that they're going in the opposite direction. Fury have read them like a book. All because of that one misstep. Flash is going to confirm their suspicions. They're going to be granted towards them up through Link. But Scythe is anchored. It's locked down. Dash. Forwards are cut it up inside the smoke. Mazin wants to take the fight to him. Back and forth, back and forth. The right clicks. It's there. B. Maybe Taco's done enough. Set them out for it. Mazin there. Oh, wall falling. Inopportune. Shy capitalizes. Lands the shot for him. Up to Khalil now. Has the armor. Has the frenzy. Maybe it will be a bit of a raid boss moment, but he's got so much to clear. There's a crossfire set up. King 
holding just close to it, spots it out. And a wide swing to just contain and a bit of a salvage situation at that sort of pistol round. The Vietan winning it, maybe they can start to get something going. It's a miraculous pistol round, Brent. It really is. It shows you that the macro strategy is not what defines the game in some of these <laughs> rounds. Because Fury had four players waiting for that site here to come through, and yet still couldn't stop it from getting value. Yeah. Lev have been granted a lifeline here. It's on them to grasp it with both hands. Usually Fury's defense side is a lot weaker than their attack. And that's map to map dependent, but just in general as a team, their defense has been poor. Backed up though. They take the gamble, they take the fight to it. Flash deep over the top. They're gonna fight, they're gonna There's swing. No fault, and yet there's no confidence there to take these fights. Taco, the back of the box does work. Try to pick and choose the right timings, and they do so correctly. Absorb the aggression, and then bait them back in for the refight. And it's those small moments by Leviathan where they just open up an opportunity for Furia to potentially grasp and make something enormous out of something small. They make you hold your breath. Absolutely, but nevertheless, they navigate the danger and bring things to 6-8. They haven't been as incredible as Furia in terms of their bonuses, but if there was ever a round to win to get you back into the game, it would be this one coming up right here. They haven't had a chance on their bonuses. The first pistol they've won. That's a great point. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's been rough going for Leviathan, but the change of the tide, 6 to 8. I feel for those fans. The Leviathan fans are having their heartstrings plucked and played with throughout this entire year. The expectations. Get out of my way. So high to begin with. Interesting wall. It's going to be cutting its way across into A main. Baits that. Olivia Tana kind of trying to play this slowly, anything but, towards the art direction. Taco again, taking point and winning his fight out, okay. Yeah, he's turned up, hasn't he? Ascent was same Taco lackluster performance, but here on Pearl, he looks like he's playing with something to prove. We needed that step up. Slow down towards the minute mark. Mid control. Poking and prodding. Looking for re-aggression from Furia. But and they often will. Oh, here in we an go. MW, here they start. Might be setting up for it, aren't they? And no utility use. Just contacting up Taco! Look at this way, that way. 360, all sorts of directions. Didn't know Blinded. what to be watching for. And Down still, away. it's a contact play. <laughs> Lever just trying to work their way into this one without making too much noise, but being met. The rifles to beam them down. down. Two players eight. left. Spike dropped left. down in the middle of nowhere. 30 seconds. Suddenly getting less and less to work with. Would have to be massive. You can pick up a rifle upgrade though. Shy's gonna take that vandal for a bit more. Nana swarm. It's a good read. Yeah, into the corner. Dead at that one spot. Oh my! Oh UCK. He's been magnificent, this map. I gotta say, the trading has been really, really good. Not just the trading, though, just watching for it. Always right place at the right time. Playoffs can often be such a different beast in terms of who steps up to the big moments. QCK's had a really rough season, actually. You know, and I talked earlier about how swingy Mazzino has been in terms of finding massive success in their winning matches and getting completely rolled over. Obviously, this is a big turnaround from Taco, too. It can just give such a different flavor to the match. Oh, this again. But no, it's not the same. So to start this off, they throw a flash and a high tide. But this is to bait like they're playing aggressive on the B side of the map. Actually, the killjoy is there. This is Furia trying to mess with King's head. And look at this. The regress towards mid. Double doors. That's where they got their sights on. Cascade. Preventing anyone from pushing through. Now Lev. Looking towards B. Looking to set themselves up for the B split. Stun. The connection. No follow up. Instead, Shy works himself in a different direction and it's still being watched for. So. Oh no. With, v5. with Shy falling, the alarm bot goes down. Dushin was already pushed up in A, but now he gets the opportunity to flank. All the way around. There's a fight to be taken. And ah, it's King that wins it, but he doesn't expect this, surely. No, Poison's not a clue. Gone. That's got to accelerate in things. Place. Yeah, you have to start playing now with it off pace. Oh, Updraft up onto the corner. Smoke. Fade dropped down. Tackle with his back to it. Does not expect Khalil to be holding. 
Another flash. It's beautiful with the connection. Azino attempted to swing through onto the cove playing Ante. Looking to see if he could salvage any moment of that one. Wasn't a B though, so 10 to 6. We've spoken at length about teams reinventing themselves and refreshing their playbooks when it comes to playoffs. I love what Fury had just showed us there. Faking the aggression over towards B-Long and getting very active in terms of how they're re-clearing the rest of the map. There's definitely potential for it to go wrong. But more often than not, they're catching, you know, shy unawares. Or King even, just that static player. And here Shy's gonna get pushed once more. Power dropped. There's contact. Dog's broken early on. Shy needs to win the fight. Dash still there. Seekers. Full committal. It's only the one for one. With the Spectre in his hands. No sweat. It's not set up for it. It's a squeeze. Taco He's all the way through main. And they were none the wiser. But quick reactions from MW. He will shut that down. Now the Seekers. Spike planted. Barreling the way forwards. Trying to clear the way up onto the high ground. Pop flash. Ah, okay. No sweat. He dodges it. It's a full util top, but it is all over the place. What a sky outplay. That's oh, ridiculous. This way, that way, on top of the boxes, using every single area of the map. And it's King who finalizes it. It's the round on the board. That the is beginning. big. To keep their composure in those moments, when there's three rounds of eight from being locked, knocked down to the lower bracket of our playoffs, I mean, that is, that is huge composure from Leviathan. They dealt with that quite nicely. During the regular season match, you would normally not see Shy taking space like that in mid. He'd just put down an alarm bot and play passive up in the mid window. Now he's trying to get a bit more active. He has to contend with those kind of pushes. And he navigated it fairly well with Nozwa. The Jazim with Op online over towards B as IGL faces star player down B long. Orb was farmed up a bit prior as well. Mazzino built up to that big one, the Reckoning. And it looks like they're coming to join King. I don't think they have the read that Dijazin is here, but the Reckoning into the op could be fabulous. The question is, does the Reckoning ever clear this left-hand side? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, don't think he would use it. I don't think he will. Having said this, Bren, it looks like a fake. Ah. The spike was drawn over to B early. And the Reckoning, you know, it all looked set up for a big B committal. Careful and here. yet, Shy and Nozwa creep their way through a main watching out for the who could be in any of these spots such an aggressive defensive player a lot of time being taken off the clock got 40 seconds left is the goal to still sell this one like it could be the b hit it, it has likely to be. yeah but where's the, pushing. where's the sky utility should do you bite on this if there's no sky the reckoning as well the big committal with the ultimate exchange and a chance to fight back furia Flashing through into it. Again, the dodging of the movement machine. He's too clean with it. A wider swing, a wider face for Taco. He does put a stopper to it and still. Spike planted. The plan does go down. Still though, making sure they don't step themselves deeper in towards the back of the site. So still holding towards Secret and Flowers. The positioning is madness once Three more. Reflank. QCK. He wins it out, even with the Guardian. Two shots is all it takes. Picks up the upgrade. And now running all the way back into the sideline. Those were the dodging of the movement. Enough with the shots. Tap tap with a rifle. And the double play set up. Both players towards R. The Jazin taking the first contact onto the corner. They don't know where King is. Expected to be towards main. Sticking all the way. The Jazin on half all the way. Not quite clear. He's taken out. Snake bite. Pushing him back. The Jazin in needle and the shot King. He reigns supreme. A masterful clutch once more. Put King in those positions and he will deliver time and again. Soft smile. There's more work to be done. He and his squad are still two rounds down on their map pick. But the Red Bull clutch and overall, just the mid rounding and the game plan, that's different. That is different. I haven't seen a round like that from Leviathan in a while. They do not sell fakes that often. They are throwing something new into the mix, and it's forced Furia to take a timeout. A little bit off balance from that one. They can realize now that the series, or the map at least, is potentially getting away from them here. This lead that they had, which was quite wide, is now getting closer and closer to equalization. I think it's so interesting watching 
King. It's like a microcosm of Leviathan in total. Owner's going to be giving his input at this point in the round, but to be honest, when I've been watching King over the course of this season, he feels like a bit of a puppet IGL with his strings kept deliberately <laughs> short, tight, held by Owner. Not too much freedom of movement for him and the rest of the team. Always playing by the playbook. And yet, actually, despite them not performing amazingly in this match, we are seeing some different looks and a bit more mid-rounding. Maybe those strings have been cut just slightly. A bit more freedom for King to direct and guide and lead his team. But Furia constantly throws something new into the mix. And part of that is the, the looseness and the confidence with which they play. They're always going to be looking to reclear something on the map or have the Jazine on an aggressive angle that catches you out. It's unpredictable by their very nature. Well, it feels like the first time in this series. Furia hard drop down to weaker guns in this one. And it looks like an exploration attempt into mid. They're taking a fight. There needs to be that containment. There is. The necessary fights are won out by Leviathan with the rifles. And now they begin to slow this one all the way down. Healing over here. Furia there for one of the first times actually run into the alarm bot I was talking about. Shine King deciding to play much more safely on an anti-eco, which makes sense. So this time, Furia's proactivity Here. doesn't reap rewards. It should be an easy cleanup now, at this point. And the question to me ends up being, do alts get committed? I feel like 2v5, probably unlikely. Furia would love to drag one out. Let's have to clear and see if he can do that. No way. No way, Wade and right through it his own nano swarm. Great try. Yeah. Great attempt to try and deny that plan, but he won't get it. That does actually it. get Khalil's lockdown online for the next round. Noz were one away. Uh, we are geared up for an enormous ultimate clash for round 20. And this merely the calm before the storm as MW faces a 1v5 that is in all senses unwinnable. Yeah. But Le Leviathan have mounted a serious comeback here. Yeah, at this point, start putting a bit more respect on their names. Not willing to go out too easily. They don't want that 2-0 defeat. This early on in the playoffs would be dire. To be knocked all the way down to that lower bracket. You gotta imagine again the stakes, the expectations. Getting deeper into that America's playoffs, it's all on the line. It's almost necessary to really Come into your own form now as we head deeper into the playoffs. Top three earning you that spot. Not just at Masters Tokyo, but also champs. That's how much it means. These are the biggest games of the year. It's well contained, but Furia are going to have a lot more fire in this next round. So all eyes on the setup as we get in to round 20. Leviathan grouped up over towards B. The Killjoy moved. Playing a lockdown retake potentially on this B side. And the scene's not here either. No operator. That's found in mid. Just need to take the contact here. It's a fight to be taken. Alt's expended on either side. Crouch, Shy on the angle. And he's got his team to back him up. King and Shy have been doing the most. All that containment towards mid, not just against the weaker buys, but now the guns as well. Furium, I just have to go for a, a save here. It's hard on the defense side, to be honest, because you don't know where Leviathan are going to end up. But if Lev end up getting into a plant situation, it could end up being rough for them. The benefit that Furia have is that the B site is still locked off with this Viper's Pit. But playing 1-1-1 one, one, one around the map leaves a ton of openings a ton of for openings. Lev to barrel through. That is a little bit risky. I mean, here. you need to save your guns if you're Furia. Got your you don't have the money to keep throwing them away. It's rounds like this, but maybe they feel like they just can't. The Seekers pushing back. They know that one player is isolated there on towards the back of the side. It's Khalil still with the setup. Are right, going to be left. spotting this one, MW. All about the timing on this one. Swings wide, takes the fight. All the way to the Nozwa. Still alive and kicking. McKing still safe hands, isn't it? 10 to 10. And all the rifles drop down onto the ground here. It's going to be another half by the Furia. Yeah, that's why I was saying the Furia potentially a save there would have been the right idea. They actually played it really nicely. I like the gambles that they went for too. But when the round is opened by Cheyenne King, 
so decisively in mid, your options are very limited. I think at this point, there is no way that Fury can keep up this level of mid-aggression. It's getting destroyed. Shine King have done a great job at altering their timings just slightly in small ways to keep Fury on the back foot and ensure that they keep control over that area of the map. If I was to just seen, yeah, sure, this next round, you're not really going to have too much, but if you can get the AWP online as Leviathan get up to 10 and set up somewhere towards A or find openings by playing aggressively over towards B, I mean, the outsides of the maps, that's got to be the favoured angle, surely. Yeah, the favoured direction. I mean, mid's just not cutting it, is it? Here, by the way, this is Leviathan taking a timeout after four <laughs> rounds won in a row. To me, this is a big... I, I don't know. I don't know how people feel about this, but this seems like a mistake in my end. Yeah, give because Fury a chance to get back into it. Exactly. You're giving Coach Kala another opportunity to talk to his squad after he's just had some input to address these minor errors, and he can always call one later on too. Different coaches, though, have very different approaches. And perhaps owner just wants to calm things down and make sure that now it's stable at 10-10. Let's go. They put it away. Remind them of the game plans at prior preparation. Same setup, same utility. We're used to seeing this now in the Americas. Viper or the Cascade. Take it easy control. The top side of be long. If not willing to hit the button just yet and commit to anything, of course, they want to try and poke and prod and see where some of the Fury players are. Once more, Brent, I'm looking at the alt status Blinded. here, right? You've got Lockdown, you've got Viper's Pit. Lockdown is often going to be used towards the B site. It's great at pushing people away, stopping them from spamming and denying the cove going down. But again, are they going to utilize it in this round? You would love it for the next. King makes the call now to start to walk over towards A. I think there was that early B presence and pressure, the utility that they were pumping into the site. And I think the hope there was to either spot out a stack or force rotations, but information gained on the return side of things there with that flash of Fury. Yet. Got to expect now that this is leaning towards A. We're only 30 seconds left, and this is where it could get dangerous. This thing is in their hands. Trailblazer's broken early on. Updraft there to Zazine. He's handed the perfect angle on a platter. And of course, doubles that one back up with the rifles now. We're down to 17 seconds. Four on four. QCK still there. Watching for it. High tide. It's messy. And it's not exactly surgical, but it has to be done with brute force. Barreling the way through into the back. Khalil, a chance to deny. A chance denied. It's Shy who survives on one HP. And Lev gets it at 11th round. They take the lead in this map. Oh, a small smile on Shy's Ooh. face. But I think one more of nervous relief than any other emotion. 11 rounds, and it has been a monstrously good comeback. This once more showcasing what the analyst S was talking about. Furious defense sides not looking too hot. Yeah. But also indicating how important that pistol was in round 13. And now we get a major clash. Taco only invests a stinger in this round because he's get that confident in his blade storm. Blinded. And Dejazine takes his op for a walk up A. He knows there's a turret here. There's the adjustments you were talking about. Yeah, I really feel like it's a good place for him to play, but he probably needed a bit more aggression to remove the turret early. It's high tide. Blocks off two of the mid approaches. This trailblazers. They're so far back. I mean, it actually gets a lot of work done. Yeah, just clearing, I believe, the front side of Arn and going back potentially, but okay. It's a face, a fight. It's taken. A drive to the side, Taco! What an opening! An upgrade found with the rifle. Bit of a flip onto the map. A main control still needs to be held down here. QCK's been overwhelmed, it's up to Dizazine. Still holding it. The dash is there, the operator as well, but he doesn't know which way to look. Dash round! Tries to dodge over the movement, but the spray from Taco eventually claims the reward with the Vipers pit down now. Lev, a set up. It's gonna be that 12th round, it's inevitable. Fury have no intention of taking the fight. What a comeback this has been. What a comeback. And although it got a little messy there in the Jet v Jet battle, I do want to give more props to Taco because he has found his footing in the final hour, potentially. Map two, the first, an absolute disaster. 
And yet he's come out all guns blazing on Pearl. I don't mean to rag on the guy, but again, he has been clearly the worst duelist heading into playoffs. His oh, performance all year, he just hasn't been able to find the form. We know that he's a great player. We've seen it in the past, but he's talked That's about it, cool. tweeted about it, said that he just can't play on stage currently. There's some mental block there for him. And these kind of openings have not really been coming that much from Leviathan's duelist. And now he's finding them. Makes the rest of Leviathan's jobs much easier. Yeah. We've got those opening engagements won. Find the weak point and now we look and at it. it. One step away, the Lev. One round away from map point. Taking a map, I should say, in this scenario. A push up, though. Fury and Dejazin and MW playing together, trying to take the game into their own hands. Might be a scramble to talk to the side. Latches onto the back of King. He's taken out easily. Snake bite. That's just a delay. Reckoning. Forward. Lev. They're striking. It's four on four. Got to clear through all this utility, though, in the lockdown. That cannot be fought over. You have you to respect run. the space. It's used, though. But I love this. Counter lockdown. Delayed. So there's about eight seconds here where they know that the site is going to be theirs. They Fury, can still back yeah. off and get in. Yeah. Fury cannot flood back in to reinforce the back of the site to try and take it back. They're going to try with the down to the fight and a brawl. It's a, a flood attempt all the way through. Just gliding right to the side of the scene. He misses almost everything. The blade's going wide. It's a scramble and a pivot to be a all foot race. All the way, and they are being chased. They can hear it. The sound cues are evident. Are they going to be able to block this one off? Who is favored? And that's what it comes down to. Lev, there's an angle here. MW, can he do the most? There's a head to be found, but he's taking all sorts of damage. Spike to be planted, sprayed by Khalil. Brought down to their knees. An attempt by Nos one. But even he Spike is denied down. and shy. Last one standing. Forced to take a back seat. 20 seconds left, no chance in hell of him winning this one. And so Furia, the chances of staying in map two alive and kicking. 10 seconds left. And what a way in which to do it. After so Time many destroyed. straight rounds in a row from Leviathan, Furia wiping beads of sweat from their brow finally stopped the momentum in a round that had so many different ults exchanged. To me, Brent, it's less so about how the ults were played and more about how Dujasin and MW grasped hold of this early tempo. That's one of the first times that we've actually seen Shy or King stumble early, trying to hold on to a bit of control. Getting Dujasin active in those early rounds and generating player advantages, that could be the key. Could this down. still go to overtime? Comes down to this. Taco with the operator investment on the attack side. It's got to be huge. He's been so for most of the map. He's been setting themselves up, but usually with the rifle in his hands, not this. Shy is so bold and aggressive in mid, playing alongside with King. He's taken A control with turret, and he's taken mid control with alarm bot. He's doing so much to give King info and the rest of these players down B-Long, info. Walk in. Flash round. Breaking the turret. Now stepping away. Screen down. See if they can get a little bit more as well, but the longer they wait, the worse this will be. Mazine has been sitting on his reckoning. That is gonna be a critical ultimate. They don't exactly know where Mazine is just yet. He used high tide at the start of the round over by A. Now he's got it back online, but they haven't seen any harbor utility. If they see some on A, they might accelerate the B hit. Likewise, they haven't broken this Killjoy setup either. And this could chew them up and spit them back out again. Updraft dash into the smoke. Oh, a few stray bullets. Almost got the kill. QCK sets his sights now. The backstab, though, it's back going to be coming towards me. It is that backstab fight. Shot landed. The adjustment. Shy's there. The wider swing as well to cover the fire, but enough damage was done that both of those players are weak. He won 40, both of them. Yeah, unfortunate. They couldn't bring them both down. But the job might just be finished here and now. Lev. Spike is planted. The reckoning gets nothing. A deeper high tide. This is going to be placed up now. And it's all down to this for Furia. Player disadvantage to tap onto it. Forces the first layer of Util out. you got to play up. you got to take the fight right past this one. Movement, dodging, juking to the side. Mazina will be the first to fall. And still they take the battle towards them, but nobody is sticking the spike. It's coming down to critical seconds. 
And at this juncture, who will reign supreme? Who will land the shots? Sticking through on the gold. Furia, they survive. What a way for the final round of regulation to end there. Over time. Oh. Whew. There's a scene's emotions painted on his face. They finally yeah. got that. I love the retake attempt. The high time usage and the push up is great, but they did leave that stick really late. What are those shots? Oh my. And for QCK, he just had to nervously watch the rest of his team attempt to execute that. Phantom moment for two of those plays in B Link. And what small things can define a playoff run? The recovery from Furia sends us to OT. 12 to 12, getting into that first round of overtime. Lev with a decent job so far, bringing it so close. Furia scramble. It's all even. Bit of a reset now in terms of the pace and expectations. Furia doing the same thing, taking early A control, alt loading into Mazine. And then starting to move back through B-Link. Mazzino's been throwing this high tide all the time. And they've been bullying him. Mazzino's still, I think, got single-digit kills. Yeah, he's sitting at the bottom of his scoreboard for his team. He doesn't have the confidence right now to be winning a lot of these fights. Not looking too comfortable. Call is made though for Furia. Dash forwards, high tide as well. Splits up this side. Now Shy still going to be sitting towards the back. Dog broken, spam as well. Will they be blessed with a kill? Just trying to force out that util. It's a tap of the spike. Sitting in the snake bite though, sticking this one here. Single bullet will do it to him. The turret still not broken. It brings him down. Never been granted. A massive chance. Swarming themselves onto the site. All the smokes blocking them off. The high tide, every single angle. And it's down to the util again, but it's a 3v5. And as long as it's watchful with the code placed up, down to MW. He sprays it down, he sprays it through. He gains the one, but not enough done. There'll be a ton. A massive, massive round to win, bringing them up once more to map point. Switching sides. And that is Next where you see point. the value of those defensive protocols. They're putting enormous pressure upon Furia as they go for the plant in the first place. And that, you know, draws mistakes out of people like Mazine. Who ends up getting caught by the turret there towards the end of the enormous damage that Shy has done. But also, they, they go forwards, put a lot of pressure down, and they're just waiting for the spam. They're inside the Viper pit. Uh, sorry, inside the Viper orb. Just waiting for MW. Can they close this out? They close it out. On the precipice of bringing us to that map number three. So damn important. Scout destroyed. This is where King got caught before. He's not going to make the same mistake again. Backs up. All the way. And has spotted the Jazim. Left to disrespect the high tide. He's ripped his way across at the beginning of the round here. Noswa still has Trailblazer. This can be used to try and clear the Jazim out, but look how early he has to use this. A spot him now. Even connecting the stun forces the dash from the Jazim, so. Respect showcase. Oh, and the alternation. A little bit of pressure towards it. They take the fight right through the box, and QCK not safe. Double up with the spray. The game plan from Leviathan has actually worked so well on their attack sides this map. They put a little bit of pressure somewhere and just wait for the defenders to peek and push on the other. 45 seconds, player advantage. And cleared. And a Killjoy util. Khalil still got that one up, so they know they haven't pushed up past this, but the alarm bot meets them, Rising. notifies them. Now Fury, it's going to come down to hitting these shots. The exec comes through. Nana Swarm blocking off the common position. Plant from Mazzino. It's dark, but it's covered. The right angle's there, and you can feel it now. The tension, the pressure is on. Khalil, the top side angle. No one was watching that. And Taka will fall. He's sort of repositioned. He's going to be calling that out to his team, but it's a 3v4. And this is seen. He's got the up. Art fight one. And now squeezing onto Mazzino, taking the right timings with it. Have to win this fight, they do! Down to King again! Snake bite! Launched at the feet. He knows no one's sticking it. It collides. Weak enough. One kill foul. Doesn't land a second. Khalil, he saves it. And it's brought again, Josh. Another round of OT. 
And how fitting that it was the two players most clutch for either squad. But King and Kilio facing up there. That is miraculous from Furia, genuinely. There is such a player disadvantage. I think a 3v5, full on. There's no just, chance they should be winning that. No, they got offered opportunities. Khalil with a little hop up on top of the wall to kill a player at art. And then a player coming behind to grab another. Breaver for Furia. It's been too close for comfort. You had such a great lead here. Map number two, you could have closed this out potentially already. But it's Lev who have been mounting this incredible comeback. They do not want to be going down to the lower bracket this early. They are fighting and giving everything. The issue for Leviathan though is that, yeah, of course it was them that had a great comeback even to get to this spot. But then they let go of two crucial map points. And from 12-10, found themselves in OT and have let go of another map point. Leviathan cannot have this map defined by their failures to convert rather than their excellence in staying steady and bringing it to 12. So far, it's both. The only difference is going to be how they finish. What ideas are going to be flowing? I'm not a fan of the way that Leviathan are playing their defense side here particularly though. They're putting their kill join there up on the opposite sides of the map and they're not supporting Taco early to get him on deep lines. And what that means is if Furia just run at him, even when he even when he got a pick, he was forced to give up so much space. Luckily, no pressure in his direction for now. Can hold that deeper line just with the operator. Gives them that constant information Where now. Cascade pushed out. That's just so Mazian can reposition. Get the high tide off from the corner now. And it's going to block off Art. All the way wraps around towards the back of the site. What a rising. And is this just going to be a straight up hit? Dash into the smoke right around the corner. That's into secret. The Jazine. Beautiful page from the playbook. Dog spots it. Exchange though. Push forward. Shayu looks to try and take the fight as well to them. Snake bites at their feet, but wrong timing for the smoke to fade. King claims that kill. Flash is exchanged. The Jazine is in no man's land. He's alone. No one's really help him fight off of this one. Does he get cleared though? I don't expect it. Here, now repositioned for the updraft. There was Uto being used to push him back. Now the high tide as well towards Art. Fight being met pound for pounds. It comes down to how these duels get one out. And already holding towards main smoked off. Sticking it down onto the defuse, Khalil. Would it be any spam? Any sort of presence? Oh, it's half over the defuse. Needs to hit the shots. The resets there, but shy. On the high ground position, the watchful eye in defensive. He helps it. Sails his team now to once more. Getting one more step away from earning themselves a map and earning themselves a chance to play all the way to bind. Another fantastic round one by Great Retake Protocols. Furia hits right as Mazzino had just used his high tide, so they have to wait for that to come back online. And they use all of that time taken to be diligent about it. Now they find themselves with their fourth opportunity to finish this map and take us to bind. Have Levy the Tang got it this time? Trailblazer spotting out the one. What's the response from Lev? Already taking up that mid control to clearance now towards Art together, grouped up, and again it's Taco. The one who's taking point, the one who stepped up. Mazzino has actually missed his cascade over in B Link. So QCK knows that he wasn't there. He's a little worried that he might have gone into spawn, actually. You can see him checking that. But if Mazzino and Taco go back over towards a B split, that Viper might be in a more advanced spot than they realize. 50 seconds comes down for this. Good timing with the high tide being broad in their face, so... They're making mid-rounds on mid-rounds here. The spike started to drift over towards B. They saw something they didn't like. I think it's this high tide. They realized the harbor's playing over towards A. That seems to have triggered some kind of call here from Lev. 
the reaction is we're going to hit the site down to the final few seconds. The anchoring players are furious. left. To try and deny yet again another chance. Updraft onto the box. Common high ground angle spots the first player. No fight to be won. QCK. Will he take the right timing? Shots rattled off. Back and forth. Close to the corner. Mazin! Unbelievable! And the reckoning built up. Let rip, let loose. And barreling forwards now. No attempt to win the fight. Or no chance, I should say. It's 14 to 14. Again, Furia. They hold on. Switching sides. If oh, King or anyone else on Leviathan had the read that they should be hitting into the harbor, Mazine gave them a good reason why that was a bad call. He ripped it. Tackle wasn't set up properly with a crosshair placement. It had to dash out. Gave him a chance to reset his crosshair again. 14-14, Furia survived. There was so little time on the clock here. I mean, look at... This play is lovely. I mean, the way that he fights this from this position is nice. But the coordination wasn't there with Shai swinging through A main with the other players. Tackle wasn't ready to break any crosshair placement either. And there's 20 seconds on the clock. Yep. Leviathan have let a fourth map point slip through their fingers. Well, it's spell dire straits. That's going to be the big question heading deeper and deeper into the OTs. It's forced a timeout out of Leviathan. And that chance to slow things down. I want to be talking to the team about what adjustments need to be made because so far, it really does. When it gets to deep into overtime, uh, at times like this, you end up just ignoring the playbook. There's not too much you can do in terms of trying to read that prior conditioning. You know, what are you going to do? Try and play off an angle someone was playing in round six? Not likely. Well, Dajazin's decided to mix things up here. He picks up an operator glass cannon on their attack side. And this, I think, is probably to try and punish the jump peeking going on towards B. Right when, when Shy plays B on his own, he jump spots these angles. We've seen him get punished by many teams before. But you just don't expect them to be running an attack op in OT, surely. Does he offer his life? Does he go for that info at some oh, point? Oh, the reposition. Shy is going to be holding towards the back of Halls. He doesn't go for Jump peaks yet. on jump peaks. Yeah, I mean, it's happening on both sides yeah. of the map right now. The jet op facing the Killjoy. On either side, the rest of the players, of course, exploring and dumping the util towards mid. Trying to push and pull players into making a bit of a reaction off of it, but a minute now in the round. Cascade. Going up. Pushes forwards. Furia. Gain that space. It's going to be met, though, with another wall in their face. Who blinks first? Yeah, I mean, this is just mad. There's Shy spot. Shy spots it. Oh, and he immediately sees the operator. I don't think he's going to be doing that one again. Furia now need a different game plan. So they are going to start oh. walking forwards into Taco, potentially. And this a huge round. chance. There's 30 seconds remaining. It's coming down to it. The committal is there. Left. Contacting right into the sideline. It's a disengagement. Taco. He moves his way back, but someone needs to deal with this trailblazer. It's hunted him down, spots him out. The reposition again, taking up control of main. It's going to be difficult for Fury to deal with. A deep flash once more. QCK timing here. Sticking onto the plan. Patience from King moving forward. It's a shorty. Denies the plant. And Lev, they set themselves up time and time again is what it feels like. But they're granted another shot to close out map two. Match point. <laughs> At this point, it does feel Look inexorable. At the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels inexorable that Leviathan are eventually going to get across the finish left. line, but how many attempts is it going to take them? This is Ten seconds left. A slightly concerning for them and shows the determination that Fury have come into the game with. But at some point, you've got to get that final round across the board. Over the hurdle. And Lev, throwing caution to the wind. Large group up. Go back to the familiar setup. It's Shy and King who are locking down towards mid on the attack side default. Rest of Lev again, pumping bullets, the utility all the way through into the side. King is hoping for a chance to rip someone's head off. Oh, the counter spam. Wow. That's just Taco trying to remove 
Whatever kills your utility, you can get going for it. Furia again. It just it's two players advantaged. It feels like Furia thrive when their backs are against the wall. This team has been incredible at 4v5 situations all season. And now they just can't lose when they're facing a map point. And left scramble looking for answers. The deeper high tide. Flash, the dog is being blocked off. Good defensive utility to Cascade to at least help him out as well. Blocks off that one angle so they can't scale forwards as a shorty. Mizzino's hands, but a spike needs to be planted. He's got it in his hands. Jumping around the side. Damage done. But still no space gained. Still no space granted. Spam. Bullets raining down on them. Lev not handed. An easy chance to try and get the spike down into the post plant. They wade right into it. Khalil with the crosshair placement. Running this way, remaining. that way. Drop down. No chance in hell for Mazzino. Out to the side. Wins his fight, but he's got to get this spike down. A tap onto it, and he knows it's just too hard. Furia, 15-15, Josh. It's never ending. Switching sides. Over time. I feel like at this point... All it takes is Furia to be able to win one of these rounds where they're attacking. And maybe we'll see them just sweep it all aside. Leviathan have looked like the better team on this map, I would say. But if it takes you 10 tries to get it over the line, and it takes Furia one, that's too thin of a margin of error. Well, here we go. <laughs> Another beginning to the OT. I have a team on that map point. But they're looking for it. The round will get them over the line so far. It's been Lev who have been most consistent. And on the defensive side. So we head into OT. Shots exchanged here. Low. A dash forward as the Jazine takes up the space now towards. Into secret. A little bit of spam might have just about done it. Taco. Oh, that's a reposition. Was nipping at his heel. Yeah. So damn close to bringing him down, but healed up now. Back into the action. There's a snake bite. Drop down so nobody can push past this point. And still being held up with the two players. Watching for it. Now, Taco is crouched, and he just needs an inch. He'll take a mile. Still, QCK might be the next line of defense. Pushing back all the way through. Mazzino groups his way around, and he might have just saved them. It was a 2v3, left down to it with the Cove. He can stick it half all the way. Just needs to watch the angle shot. Oh! Oh it shreds them. The Absolute mince me on the back wall. A secret, two players fall. And it's Furia who get over that hurdle. Groans echoing out. I mean, reminiscent of chosen going for a knife kill towards the final moments too. Oh Smiles my. all across the Furia side. That could be the play that does it. Finally. It's Furia. We find the edge in OT. The first time that they've had a map point here on Pearl. Now we'll see if they can close it out. They've been consistent in rounds like this, yet Taco. Once more, the difference maker, QCK, feeling like he can take a timing, pushing through the smoke, pushing through the cascade. This is so aggressive from Dijazine and MW. They want oh. to rewrite the ship, and they do. It's immediately equalized. Furia, they are not eager to lose this opportunity that's been granted. The chance to end this in 2-0. And by the look of the spikes movement, we could see a clash between Taco and Dijazine. Dejazine and MW are so active in terms of clearing out the map, looking, hunting for duels everywhere they can. They've given the A site for but a moment. Doubled up. But you've got to imagine that they'd be heading back in that direction soon. Yeah, and no one is meeting them here. They're not turning around. They're not going back to site. They've left They're it completely. Flank. They're going for the full wraparound. I mean, this is crazy. Moments like this in OT. Sometimes the unorthodox play is the best left. one. Lev. They realize now the site's opened up. They reposition, taking our control, but it's this fight that's to be taken. Noswa watching it crouch down. Not favored, or at least he should have been. He doesn't win the fight. Doubled up. It's a bait and switch. Running the footsteps away to Jazine. He holds his ground now. 
And the whole goal of this one is to retake and re-clear through into Art. Another pushed up position, it's Taco behind the box. MW low, the flash gets negative info, he takes his timing, and it's just immaculate! Striking forwards to Jazino, still 2v2, let his match make it one. Khalil, so much more to jump spot towards it. And Lev, in the moment of need here. Toying with them, they know time's low, they know it's running out. Jumping round, it's Taco with four, and we go again. What a round from Taco Leah. Switching sides. The step oh, up time. compared to his regular season performance just today just has just been immaculate. There's a scene as well, firing on all cylinders. Nothing to take away from the Fury of Duelist. But the step up from Taco to make plays like this in the most pressured moments. He's doing so much more. So much more than he's been able to all year long. And we go into it, 16-16. Oh, Taco's alone. The flash connects, moving forwards. Dash is dead, doesn't hit the flick. Brought down. Dudazine finds the opening, the reposition, all the way to screens, dashed up top, is it going to get cleared? The spam, all the way, it's down to this, on the corner, no way, not a chance. Mazzino does not go unnoticed. And with him falling, to 5v3, everything being thrown at the wall, Furia. And just pure pace. That's a decision that gets made, that's how they want to take the round, and that's how they are going to win it. It's up to Nos what to do the impossible. In a 1v4, with all the utils in the night and delay, all it just wasn't going to happen. And so yet again, we find ourselves Fury at one more chance, Switching one sides. more step. Match point. Bringing it over the line to taking this series. Now, they are no strangers to the Depot T just the other day. Taking 1917 to Sentinels, they couldn't do it there. But for that to be replicated here, Leviathan would have to win the next three rounds in a row to draw things level, pull ahead, and close out. Leviathan, they feel like they're out of gas at this point to some degree. When things go quickly, they weren't able to stand up there with Taco. And the Taco, options. he just goes for a rifle in what could be their final round. It could come down to this. Could be the last round in the series. One more for Furia. Now we'll claim that 2 0. Anything but easy. Moving into mid. Risks on risk. And with the util out. None the wiser. Pushing forward. He's stunned up. The fire is returned. A skip and a hop up the staircase. But Lev, they got once more. In a 3v2. The spike is planted. They've got the post plant set up. I said Leviathan looked like they were out of gas, but that one was pacey, creative, loved it. Still winnable though for Furia. Yeah. See magic from Khalil and Dejazine. Dejazine, he found that rifle close towards the box, a position that's been played before. He's been seen. He's passed the rifle. It's equalized down to that two on two. Who finds a one? And is it down to this? Mazzino versus Khalil. Turn spot six shot lands. 17, 17. Switching sides. What Overtime. a time for Mazzino to step up. 15 kills across 34 rounds. It ain't great, but he's getting them when it matters towards the end to save his team. And Brent, we talked just now about Furious Sentinels, that game on blind. A banger of a match that ended 19-17. That one not going the way of Furia. This one, no idea which way it's going. Both teams so neck and neck. The momentum flying in all sorts of directions. They do not want a repeat. What happened the other week, but once more, the scoreline reset. Trailblazer fast, they push his tackle onto the angle and he's hunting for a kill. Wall in his face, Dash still there. Fires off the shot and repositions, backs himself away. Grouped up though, Furia. What in position life. now, and it looks like they want to try and get this hit online. Execing into the back as a dash and a flash. All the necessary utility, making sure they hold 
the space being grinded towards them now moving into the back of the side is a call being made to try and fight for this doubled up setting themselves up will there be a flash as well mw he's also with them they're all grouped up it's a triple face. They're putting so much in secret. And they could just walk straight into this. Flash, dodge, a second one used once more. Lined up. And the rifles, they sing I an exchange of bullets. Move. It's a reckoning online. It moves its way across. It's traded. Two players left. Stunning machine. He repositions and he collects Taco. Last one left. Stun. Still meets him. Shot to be found here, but with one bullet left, it's just not good enough. And so Furia once more. They find themselves on the cusp. And that one is a strategic adjustment. Point. The Leviathan A retakes have been working excellently because the Leviathan are able to flush them out a secret before moving forwards. This time, Fury are on their attack. Commit everybody here. Look how many bodies they've got just stacked on top. Looking to dodge the flashes and fight. No fancy utility plays for this team. They want to get down in the dirt. And it is feeling like sometimes... Relying on a bit of brute force to get it over the edge. Here we stand. How many times have I said it? One step away for Furia to close it out in a 2-0. Consistently, round 36. Tushazin so bold to hold his ground there against the Cascade and the Flash. But is their composure? To Lev have what it takes once more to bring us to another round of OT. Or will it be Furia running away with it? Fight to be taken and it's matched. There's a trade, but it's a scramble and an evacuation away from Art. They want nothing to do with it, Lev. They slow it down. They have a minute on the clock. That is really good from Mazino. Good head, good head space to be able to break that Trailblazer too. He has the spike. If he committed to trying to get the trade, that would have been even more disastrous. This Killjoy utility is very rarely getting broken. No one wants to land towards B at no. all. It's all been going towards A. I mean, part of the reason is that you rely so much on ultimates actually pushing people away from B. But look at this, Furia. They've made the read. They're gambling. Gambling. The match win on the fact that this ends B. There is only QCK left. defending the A site. And they are wrong. Back to the sides. QCK, maybe a bit of spray, could do some work here. He's got the angle, oh, but he's left instantly. What a read from King. Ten seconds Rips left. his head clean off. And the spike is planted, repositions. No one playing in art, everybody from main, and they've got the util to delay. What a difference in terms of post-plant positioning. None of that aggression that we saw from Furia. Cascade through. The first layers of this now being used as a snake bite overlapping with the Nana Swarm. Nobody's tapping Here. this yet. Two big pieces being used very early on by Lev. Here's the snake bite. Digizine working himself up. Operator looking for the easy shot. He will not be granted it. And it's an absolute bloodbath. A brawl left up to Khalil. And it's comical, isn't it? With the pressure mounting. 18-18. What a way to begin the America's playoffs. Switching sides. The longest the OT that we've had this season. This one is going to end with someone on at least 20 rounds. <laughs> Just ridiculous. And that's the first kill impact that King has really had. That spot that you see right here. His kill onto QCK, he's been hovering around 31 kills for a long time. He did a lot of heavy lifting to get his team up to 12. And since then, the IGL, the star player of Leviathan, has been quite quiet. And this is one of the longest, I mean, the longest overtime that we've had in VCT Americas. But we're also looking, Aspas, Cryo, they had 33 kills. That's the current maximum, the high score, if you will. King creeping closer. It seems likely. Surely. A map to break records, perhaps, for our opening match of the playoffs here at America's. Bit of a breather with 18-18, a chance to set up those stakes as well. You've got to think of the importance. Every team going to be hunting for that top three finish to make masters, to make champs as well off of it. Operator, Taco, close. Oh, oh my! What a read! It's that instinct! He heard the footsteps, he knew they'd be barreling in that direction. And he brings the Jazine down. That jet head to head. 
Trailblazer, stun connects, closer to default box MW. He's got to be careful not to be sprayed down, but he's safe for now. Moving forwards into the B split, so High Tide rips its way across the plan. Will start to go down, Mazine gets it off cleanly, moves back away. These are very four positions that are being held by the M... I mean, only by MW though, right? He's kind of on an island away from the rest of the squad. The player advantage, maybe that's why he's looking for a pick to try and at least get them that advantage, but Taka watches. The swing towards Pillar brings Whoa. him down once more. High tide. It's interesting. Cuts his way through onto the side as a snake bite as well. Surely it doesn't come down to this. Surely it doesn't come down to spam. Nana Swarm's there, fights to be taken. You've got to push up if you are allowed to spray. It's not planning for them. Round to the side. They're going to swing wide left. They stick it through. Taco contains. And he watches the teammates back, bringing them Switching once sides. more to the precipice. King is now up to 33 kills, but that's not the player that I've got my eyes on. It is Taco. Because he's also yes. hit the kill record so far, One 33. Three. And this My from a player three. that I had oh. very low expectations for coming into this match. But it was all a mental block. You, we know it. We've seen it in the past. Taco knows it as well. And something about the stakes, the pressure, the moment has brought it out of him again. Can't let bring it to 20. Can they take it over the line? Can they bring us to map three all the way with this series? Pushing through with a flash, high tide. Machine loses the duel. An opening. And now the holes, it's all over the place. Fury backing away with the stun connecting. It spots two of them. Good information, gonna be gathered. And a reposition here, QCK yeah. close to the corner. This could be it. His orb's gonna be going down in just a Boys moment. He manages to escape being trapped in the corner, but Leviathan is still up in a 5v4, heading towards the B site. Nobody in positions to spam and stop the coal yet. from going down and Mazino planting. Or oh, the turret being used, that's heard by Khalil, and they're starting to trickle back over to B. Moving up. Reinforcements starting to arrive. Nana Swarm set up, still there. It's unusual though. The way it cuts its way across, nobody can play close to it. There's an opportunity to punish, and they do just that. Taco was alone. His team couldn't push up, they couldn't play with him. Cove now lay it down. Plant has to be found. QCK opens himself, and he's brought down as well. It's the Warbang kill. It's a three versus four, and Lev right here, right now. A chance. They need to grasp it. It's there for them. Wall in their face, smoke. Obfuscating, hiding, and the kills flowing one after another. Pushing forwards, no one sticking it. Everything to play for. Dijazine will not be able to do it. Left, pull it off. 10. 20 rounds gained for Lev. 38 played in that map alone. And we are heading to bind. What a map. It had everything. A stellar comeback from Leviathan, then choking away many opportunities. 18-18, tied up, and Leviathan pulled forwards. Ridiculous performances out of Takulia, and he now takes the lead, only taken over by King by the look of it. Finished with 35, King. <laughs> to tackle he is 34. Tackle would have had the kill record if not for the player on his team as well. I mean, absolutely, I'm going to say it, bonkers, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> to start things out in VCT Americas. And just to touch on Tackle once more, because he, to me, was the more impressive step up, even though King had a phenomenal performance. We talked about him only taking three first duels in the first map. He took 18 on Pearl. With 11 first bloods. 12, in fact. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, just crazy. crazy. Time for a quick break. When we return, Giannis is going to get us ready for that map three, and Lord knows these teams need it. We'll see you in just a few. You know you don't want to miss it.